Hey guys, welcome back to Canner Ranch. Hopefully you made it through the first couple of minutes of this video and I'm not just here talking to myself. This is our full seed to harvest or clone to harvest video, I guess, a wedding cake for our commercial grow. We have about 820 plants in our hand mixed soil if you've watched any of our previous videos. We supplement feed with General Hydroponics nutrient line just to even out any inconsistencies in the crop, but overall the soil pretty well has enough nutrients to get her through. This grow started in April in Southern Ontario, which is pretty much the ideal time to be vegging plants. You get great sunlight, great humidity, great temperatures, everything. The plants pretty well loved it. And four weeks they exploded and we were ready to flip the flower. Everything from this point and up until about week five or six of flower went pretty smooth. Uh, at week five or six, our humidity and our temperatures started to get a little out of control. We were prepared for this as it was July in Ontario and last year we were well aware that our nighttime humidity temperatures would hit 100% consistently. So we were prepared to fight this with dehumidifiers. We ended up adding six dehumidifiers to the greenhouse to bring our nighttime humidity down to 70%, which was fine and all throughout the day. Then you're dropping down to 40, 50%. Add a bit of airflow, you should be fine for any mold or bud drop problems. However, on Ontario, we ended up getting two weeks of rain, pretty much straight, every day it rained. So then we're dealing with nighttime humidity that we can keep down at 70%, but then in the day when it rains, our humidity is going up to 100%. We really couldn't fight this as if we added dehumidifiers, it would increase our heat, and we were already pushing temperatures around 90 degrees. We also, in order to use dehumidifiers, we couldn't vent, so that would even push our temperatures further and likely increase more problems for bud rot. We added more fans to try and get as much airflow as we could underneath the canopy, beside the canopy, on top of the canopy, but obviously with such a large area, it's gonna be next to impossible to have every bud getting perfect airflow. So we kept an eye on it, and uh, by week seven, we could tell that the heat was starting to get to some of the buds, the humidity, in some of the outlying areas, we were starting to find evidence of small amounts of bud rot starting. So at this point, we decided it's uh, time to flush. This is a week to 10 days earlier than when we would normally flush this genetic, but they have had intense light exposure and high humidity. So the buds have actually developed quite a bit faster than normal. And uh, they actually should be right on target. The video of these trichomes were taken right around day 56, I believe it was. As you can see, most of them have turned cloudy. We are starting to get a few ambers. There is definitely still some clear in there, and even the ambers may just be from the intense light exposure. But overall, we're getting into that harvest window. So at uh, day 60 here, we decided it's time to strip all these plants down. It took us about three days. We remove all the fan leaves. And there then we are ready to start cutting the plants. We uh, cut each plant, we'll weigh it, we document in our record record keeping system and that whole process takes about three days so we're looking about six days to harvest the full greenhouse once they go into the drying room we then give them a two week dry you could tell as soon as we started harvesting and weighing the plants that we were a little bit ahead of harvest schedule here they were coming in a little bit light and wedding cake specifically it usually in the last 10 days will do a final explode and those bottom uh, nodes will start pushing out some big beefy buds and the tops will just really swell so we weren't quite there, but I mean, as far as taking the risk with the uh, bud rot, we're pretty, pretty happy with where we're at. We still got a pretty good harvest out of it.
after about 10 to 14 days of hang drying and we'll be checking the buds consistently here for moisture content making sure there's no bud rot forming anywhere else we will then take the buds and we're going to debud them essentially we'll take the plants and strip all of the buds off into a manageable size from there we take about two plants three plants maybe at the same time and we'll run them into our machine trimmer. Uh, this again depends where the end use is. These ones again are going to be going at a pre-roll material. So there's not a lot of point in hand trimming. So we uh, put them into this machine trimmer. In here we'll vary up the speed, but uh, they get about two minutes in the machine trim. And uh, we usually go at a slower speed. This is a fast forwarded video, so it's not as fast as it looks. But from here, if the moisture content is right in the buds, and we usually do a shock to them, so we'll drop our humidity in the room for about an hour to 40%, essentially makes the outside leaves a little crispy while maintaining the moisture in the buds. We can come out with buds that are pretty well ready to go. We'll still go and do a final touch up and we'll check all these top buds to make sure there's no mold in them. There is obviously gonna be a little bit of trichome damage with this method, but overall we have found it hasn't really affected our THC potency which if you watched any of the previous videos, it's uh, pretty much what the legal market comes down to. And in pre-rolls, again, it's not really going to make a whole lot of difference. And just one last thing on that trimmer, we uh, have been using it for quite a few crops now, and we've even compared it against a Green Bros trimmer. This Ryzen Tech trimmer is under $1,000, and uh, the company actually reached out to us and they gave us a promo code we can use. So if you're looking for a new trimmer, I'd give them a shot. You will get 8% off with the code on the screen there, and the link's in the description. Anyways, as you can see, the buds are pretty well trimmed up. Uh, they do involve a little bit of hand touch up and we just like to check them all to make sure there's no bud rot mold or anything that doesn't look nice. We still don't want our pre-roll material being anything but uh, best we can provide. As you can see, the uh, buds are quite frosty even after the machine trim. Um, all good density. Our yields, we were a little bit shy on these, but given the early harvest, I mean, coming in with 43 grams of plant on a strain that's not a huge yielder, uh, we're pretty happy with it. We still think it should, probably would have been around 50, we would have finished it, but overall, it's a pretty good product. They're all nice, solid buds. They essentially sound like a rock dropping into these metal bins. Final weight for the full grow is a little over 34,000. Time brings it to about 30 grams a square foot. Nothing to brag about by any means, but I mean, again, given the conditions, we're uh, pretty happy with it and give us something to work with. Uh, I don't have the sale price on it, but I would be assuming we're gonna be right around that $2 uh, gram again. So about $70,000 coming out of the greenhouse for this uh, summer grow. And that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you made it to the end and we'll see you next time.